I wanted to start off just by by welcoming those of you who are new uh, into Magnetic Mind and, and sort of just talk about the premise. And, and the the premise, I guess, of of the Magnetic Mind is that your your thoughts are going to create your reality. And, and wherever your focus is is focused, it, it eventually turns into your reality. And so how many of you really subscribe to that? That our, our thoughts and our thinking is, is what's actually creating what we're doing, whether or not, you know, you feel like, uh, you know, your thoughts turn into your actions or your thoughts, you know, pull in others who are in alignment with that. But just type in a yes, how many of you are, you know, that's true for you? Like it's completely true that you know that people's thoughts shape and create their reality. For me, it's it's so it's so 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 real and so true. Uh, you know, I've seen it, I've witnessed it. How many of you, by the way, have witnessed people who, no matter what happens, uh, they can find a way to be unsuccessful? You know, they can have everything going right, but their thoughts are going to. Uh, you know, create their reality. So that that's a that's a premise, okay, and it's a very important one. So so we know that it's true, right? We know that it's true that our, our thoughts uh, create our feelings. Our feelings uh, show us how to act or when to act, and then that action really really creates our reality. And so so it's a really core premise that we've got to understand that well how are we thinking and what are we doing because one of the hardest things that i see is, is people trying to create things and oscillating okay just type in a yes if you ever felt like you've oscillated like one step forward one step back one step forward one step back i, I want to share how and why that happens we all have a current reality which is now get a bit of pen Often, yeah, me too, me too. So let's see if it goes better with uh, with black. <laughs> we all have a current reality, and then we have, you know, a vision of, of what we would like. Okay, black's better, isn't it? Yeah, current reality and vision. And so we have these these two moments. Now, if if we're only creating the you know the the current reality. Um, if we're only creating the vision and it's dictated by the current reality. So if when we're moving, all of our actions are dictated by the current reality, well, guess what happens? We end up coming right back. And this is a really hard thing to, to acknowledge, but if you are creating, if you're trying to create only because of current circumstances or ways that you don't like where you are now, the problem is, is that that always has to stay there and you end up just going around in circles. And it's one of the biggest mistakes that I see is that people have <laughs> been told to goal set, they've been told to do all of these things. But in the nature of that, what they're doing is they're trying to resolve their identity. And so I want to explain this because, you know, for me, creating something is something that's really important to me. How many of you guys would love to just know the skills of creating? Be able to go, you know what? I want to have that. I want to create that. That's what I would like to create. And now I have it. Who would like that to be a reality? I would like to have that. And now I have it. See, that's not true for most of us, right? Most of us, we don't have that relationship with, with getting what we want, see? And that's because most of us in our current reality, you know, we don't feel good enough, so we're not good enough, okay? So instead of just going for what we want, you know, we don't deserve it, okay? We don't deserve. Instead of, instead of, instead of just going for what we want, we have to be perfect, so we can't make a mistake. Instead of just going for what we want, we, we're not capable. So we're not capable. So we always have to learn something. And so what, what happens is, okay, is instead of just going for what we want and saying, hey, that's what I want and going for it, where well, it's actually dictated, our action actually gets dictated by a current reality. So a person who's not capable will spend their life just becoming capable. So they will collect resources. Resources meaning I'm not capable, I need more education, I need more this, I need more that. 
the per the person who's perfect is is instead of going for what they want, their action will be dictated by no mistakes. So they'll plan and think and plan. The person who doesn't deserve it will pretend that they're going for it, but never just go for it and take the action. The person's not good enough is always trying to fix themselves. See, fix themselves. What I notice when I study billionaires, when I study billionaires, I want you to get this, they weren't perfect. And now you guys all know that. You know billionaires aren't perfect, right? But then we all subscribe to these courses that tell us we have to go and personally develop ourselves into some mythical being in order to have what we want. Is it true? Like we know that billionaires aren't perfect. You know, there's one that's running a, a large country at the moment and I can see, I can see his problems glaring me on, on Twitter every day. <laughs> And, but the truth is, is he just went for what he want, right? He went for it. And so what most of us are doing is instead of going for what we want, what are we doing instead? We're going over here, doing something else. Type in a yes if this is resonating with you. Instead of going for what we want, most of us are going over here and doing something else. So the hardest thing is to understand that... Your vision, what, what it is that you choose to create, your vision and your current reality, they are unrelated. They are unrelated. Where you are now and there, they don't need, this doesn't need to be a better version of this. They're completely unrelated. The current reality is that you are, uh, you know, you're choosing to have the steak and a vision is you're having the fish. They're unrelated. They don't, they don't, it's not, it's not this current reality of being broke. And so then my vision is only to be a millionaire. See, but that's related. That there is problem solving. And whenever it's in this situation where you're broke trying to be a millionaire and the only reason you're trying to be a millionaire is because you're broke, what happens is, is you carry your identity with you. And this is the last thing I want you to really get today, is you become this identity, somebody who's trying to solve this feeling of brokenness. That becomes who you are. I want you to hear this. You become someone who's trying to solve that identity. Therefore, when you land on the vision, you're, you currently... You, your current reality, your current identity goes, well, what? No, no. Who I am is working class. Who I am is broken. And now I have this. Well, who the heck am I? You see? And, and what happens is they go, well, who the heck am I then? You know, I've been this way my whole life. I've been trying to prove myself my whole life. And now I have it. Shit. Well, I don't know who I am and I don't want to forget. I don't want to lose who I am. So I'm going to break this somehow. I'm going to break it somehow so I can go back to not feeling good enough again. Does that make sense, everyone? I'm going to break this relationship. I'm going to break this business. I'm going to, I'm going to make it not work. Or worse, as they're getting close to it, oh, this doesn't really feel like me. So they start moving in different ways. They say, this doesn't really feel like me. And this is what I always say whenever I hear that, duh, <laughs> of course it doesn't feel like you. It's a freaking new outcome that you've never done before. Oh, Chris, I don't like, know if I like the feeling of cold calling. Duh, <laughs> it's new. You know, you've got to get, I don't know, I don't know if this feels right. I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. I'm this. They come up with all of these new feelings that they go, well, I don't want these feelings. And the truth is, the truth is, is it's the ego, it's the part of us that's been here. It's this ID that we created, pulling us back to the current reality so it remembers who it is. Who feels like they're learning something tonight? So you can get all the tools, all the strategies, everything else. But if you've got a vision that is trying to fix your current reality, it, it, it just it just will always be a struggle. It's awesome. Thanks, Michelle. I love the feedback, guys. You can just uh, you can just pile it on if you like. Who's enjoying this? Is it good? 
<laughs> if you have a vision that is only there to resolve the current reality in some way, okay, it will always be in this oscillating pattern. You must get a true vision. Write that down. I must have a true vision. And a true vision is something that is completely unrelated to the current reality. Because problem solving and fixing just doesn't work. You just truly want to have a creation. See, a creation is like an artist who's just choosing to, to make an amazing painting. It doesn't change their life. They're just making it. They're choosing to just have something true. See, an entrepreneur like me, my art is my business. I freaking love it. I love it. I'm just choosing to create an amazing business. But I'm still going to be the same right? Make 5 million, make 10, make 20 million, right? I'm just, that's just what I'm choosing. It's not going to solve anything. I'm going to be the same dude that has the same amount of problems that he turns up to with that. And that's the lie with, we tell ourselves, right? Is that we think that this vision is going to solve now. And I'll prove it to you that when you just create something true, which is, I just want that. I just choose that. I just want to have the steak. I just want to have the fish. I just want that. When you choose that, then it can actually resolve because it's not trying to fix you. You don't need to be fixed, by the way. You're completely fine. You might want to let go of some old habits. That's fine. You can always pick them up later. But intrinsically, you don't need fixing. You need to know how to tune your mind into what you truly want to create. So here's the big question I have for you. What would you really, truly love? What would you truly love to create? I really want you to know, what would you truly love? Maybe type in some answers. I want to hear what would you, tr what are some true visions? And true visions, guys, are just some things that you love. What would you truly love to create? A laptop lifestyle. And so what would the laptop lifestyle, what would that true choice be like? Explain it to me. Is that, a, is that a true choice? Is that really what you want? Nice. I like them, Dave. I think there's more there, right? Like what's true? Yeah, I mean, you've got all these I'm becoming things. It's all, it's all based. It's all focusing on this guy. I'm not interested in solving the current reality. I just want to know what's a true vision. Yeah. And so, so I'll give you guys some feedback on, on some of these choices is I want, and I'm going to help you in a second to really tune into a true choice that you would just love. Okay. Cause I'll, I'll give you an example. I, I always used to tell my coach, I'd say, I want a hundred million dollar company. And she would say, why? And I'd say, well, I just would love that. I should say, why? Why a hundred million? Like, what do you really want? And then it was like, oh, what do you mean? <laughs> she was like, well, why a hundred million? Why not a hundred and two? Why not a hundred and five? Like, what's true? And I realized, and this is my personal story, is is I realized that uh, that I was putting that number. That was all. It was all trying to just hit something because my biggest thing here is not good enough. So if I, if I put a big vision out there, so I got into, I go, do you know what's really true? I just want to have an extremely, you no, know, wildly, I wrote wildly profitable company that makes a difference. And, and I just thought, I just want to have a wildly profitable company that makes a difference. And I don't care, honestly, if that's 20 million, 40 million, 100, 200, a billion, I just want to wildly. And I was like, man, and I remember saying to myself, man, that's, that's actually what I want. I want wildly profitable companies that makes, that's what I want. 
I don't care. I want, you know, and then I wrote a next thing down and I went, you know what I really want? I really want, I said, what I really, I want financial abundance. Right. I was like, I, I, I don't care. I just want to be, I want to be able to have, I want to be able to buy whatever it is I want to buy, give money to whoever I want to give to. And I want to have more left over. I was like, I just want abundance. And so I wrote that down. I was like, oh, I want that. I want that. I was like, you know what I want? I want to, I want to be totally in love. I just want to be in love. I want to have an amazing, life. that's what I want. I want that. And then I started, I started unpacking this. Right. And, and, I, and it was like, wow, because I truly was speaking from here rather than, than getting into to these things where I'm always, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to solve this. And so here's my question to all of you. What are your true choices? Like true in your heart. But let's really just think about this and think about one because a, a lot of people won't do this because, oh, Chris, that's good for you to talk about, la, la, la. I need to make money right now. It's like, no, the time to do it is now. You see, the time is always now. It, it's not about, well, I'll, I'll go solve this problem and make the money. Then I'll think about what my heart really wants. I promise you, when you get in alignment with what your heart really wants, and I want you to hear this, when you get in alignment with what your heart really wants, you have more reasons to make the money. It's easier to. It's harder when it's just going for something you don't really want. When you when you go when you know what you really want, the lifestyle, the love, the this, when you tune into that, the cold call's easy. The 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 how the how is easy because you're going for it. Type in a yes if you get that. The how is easy. So so I'm, yeah, who's with me on that? Because it's it's tuning into the why, tuning into what you want that that is really gonna pull you forward. But it's not this. You know, and, and Dave, you know, I've seen some of yours and thanks for typing in. It's not just typing out a, you know, a, a number. It's, it's going, what do I really choose? What do I really want? And so let's get into some work here. So my question is, and I want you to use the word choice, okay? Because word, the word choice always allows us to remember that it was a choice. So I want you to type something in that you want to choose, okay? So I want you to tell us, like, I choose to have blah, 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 or I choose to be blah, blah, blah. And try your best to just tune into it. At the two-day course, it's coming up this weekend. For those of you who are coming, we do a whole awesome exercise on getting into, into your heart and choosing this. So those of you who are coming, it's going to be absolutely awesome. You're all invited. So, so what is it that you choose? I want you to type it in. Just one. You don't have to do a huge thing, okay? When you say, I'd love to leave my job, you're resolving your current reality, okay? So I just want you to just to really get that, that um, we want to choose. I choose financial freedom. Beautiful. What a great choice. Like a lovely choice. I love that choice. Financial abundance. Awesome. 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 It's a great choice, by the way. It's one of my fav favorite choices to make every single day. I say, I say totally abundant. Time, energy, money, spirituality, everything. Nice. Nice, nice. Okay, so so either type in your choice um, or type in a yes if you've just done it on a piece of paper, just so I know that everyone's on it. Awesome. All right, great, great. I saw a lot of yeses come in. Perfect. Okay, totally fine. Um, why do I find this hard? Didn't you already do it? Just choose. You just choose. Yeah, well, one of the core beliefs that, that we can have and so it's a good question. Um, so thank you. Why do I find this so hard to choose? That's because your current reality, uh, you have a belief swimming in here that you're not allowed to have what you want. So if you find it hard to choose, it's because of a current reality belief that says I'm not allowed to have what I want. True. <laughs> So here's my question about that choice. Whatever choice, uh, Jamie uh, says, uh, I keep thinking I can only choose one thing. Yeah, nice. So I'm going to choose by limitation. I have 11 things I'm choosing. I have 11 things I'm actively moving towards. So here's my question to you. That choice that you just wrote down, is it oscillating? Do you feel like sometimes you're moving, sometimes you're stuck? Sometimes you're moving, sometimes you're stuck? Is it, is it just stuck? Like it's not moving at all or is it flowing? Okay, you can type in one of three things. Is it stuck? Is it oscillating? Or is it just flowing? 
oscillating, oscillating. Most people will be oscillating. Most people will force a little bit of movement only for it to go back. Stuck, fair enough. Yep, oscillating. See, see, most of most people's choices will either be stuck or oscillating until you really, really learn this work. Uh, and then when you learn the work, it will just be, yep, it's in flow, that one's in flow, that one's in flow, that one's in flow, because really, why wouldn't you just be moving towards what you want? Like, why, <laughs> why does the world have to be hard? Doesn't it be hard? Why wouldn't you be oscillating? That's all right. Um, so either type in a yes or oscillating or something if you've done it so that I, I know it's there. So, so as you're moving towards what you want, you're either stuck, oscillating, or you're just flowing, flowing towards it. Okay. So, so here's my question. Okay. What do you think? when you think about that choice? Like, what do you think? And I want you just to write down some of the things you think. So, um, do I have another? There we go, last piece of paper. So, so if I'm choosing to have sold, sold out magnetic mind events, all right, I would love that. That is a total love. I would like, I would just like sold out events. Where am, where am I now? I, you know, I think we've got 56 people coming this weekend. All right. So, okay. So this, this to me, it's flowing. Like it's, it's flowing, but it does feel slower than I would like it. All right. So, so now I'm going to ask myself, first off, what do I think? What do I think about? Okay. So I want you to just ask yourself, what do you think when you think about this goal? So you might write stuff down like I feel like it's I think it's a lot of work. I think I can't do it. I think and just and I just want you to write them down. I don't have the skills. How do I get around the roadblocks? What if people judge me? I just want you to write down all the things that you will think. OK, write down all the things that you'll think. The, the second thing I want you to write down, OK, is is how do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? I feel stuck. Yeah, so write it down. Right on. Carrie says, my thing might be too woo-woo. Yeah, okay, cool. That's what you think. I feel excited. Nice. Feel frustrated. Awesome. Write down how you feel. Because whenever you're moving towards what you want, okay, here's what we want. This is our vision. This is our point B. You're here in current reality A. Whenever you're moving towards it, okay, as you move, there's an opposing force that's always pushing you back. And this is called resistance. And mostly it's you resisting it. <laughs> you know, mostly it's, mostly it's you resisting it. It's who you are, who you've been creating this resistance because there's no reason why you can't just have what you want. There's no reason. So I want you to write down what you think, what you feel about it. But then I also want you to answer this question. How do you define, how do you define yourself compared to the goal? How do you define yourself compared to the goal? That's a good question. Hmm. How do you define yourself? Uh, yeah, there'll be some that come in, Dave. Uh, I define myself as small compared to I define myself as not good enough. I define myself as too, too, too you know, not, I haven't done enough work. I'm not... I'm a fraud compared to that. Uh, I would be greedy to have that. How do you define yourself? Out of my depth, not trusting my ability. Hey guys, I see you over there on Facebook. Um, be awesome to, to be able to connect with you more on Zoom if you can. Cool. So the next thing is you've defined, how do you define yourself? Okay. 
how do you define others? How do you define others compared to that? How do you define others compared to that? So, so when you think about this goal, when you think about how do others deal with this, what would you define? How do you define others? Hmm. Right on. So I define myself as others better than me. I judge myself more. Others seem more focused. They know what to do. I compare myself to them. I decide to find others as being faster to understand things more quicker. Yeah, so we're defining others compared to this as well. Why can they do them so fast? Probably true. So the next one is how do you define the world? How do you define the world when it comes to this? You know, it might be you define the world as it's hard to, to run events. It's hard. You might define the world as, as, as something that's against you. You have to prove yourself to it. It's a chat. Like how would you define the world? So you might have a definition of the world as being against you or hard or difficult, or you might define the world as easy or define the world as skeptical, or they're not ready for what I want to do or not supporting. And, and so I want you to get all your definitions out here. Because I, I want to ask and, and keep digging around this, by the way, is this, is this good? Know thyself, right? Know thyself. You guys enjoy know yourself. No, and I want you to write this down and own this. Nothing is personal. Everything's a structure that you've created. Nothing's personal. It's a structure in your mind that you have created. And at some point in your life, at some point in your life, the structure that you created was very, very, very important to you. Right? Very very important. And so it's nothing's personal. It's just a structure. You have a structure inside your brain. Okay. And, and, and so, yeah, you can change the structures, but first we've got to honor that, that they're ours. We created them. So someone might have a structure that they don't like public, like don't like rejection. Therefore that structure, they want to go public speak and they get annoyed at themselves. Why am I so scared in front of an audience? No, you've just got the structure that says being rejected by others is bad. Right. <laughs> right. So it's a structure. Who's getting this by the way, who's getting it. Give me a yes. If you are. Thanks, Heather. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Gwen. Welcome by the way, Gwen. So, so here's the question is what is the underlying assumption? What are you assuming? What is the underlying assumption? Uh, or everything you've written down here, what is the underlying assumption? So what are you assuming? And I want you to be brave enough. That's, that's correct. It's too hard, not fear. Got it. Limiting beliefs are true. I'm assuming that I can't do it, right? Assuming that it's harder for me than everyone else. Guys, I'm so proud of you for writing these things in. I'm not putting your names to them, but good for you. I'm not good. And that's the underlying assumption. You see? Now, can you see with this underlying assumption just how difficult it is for this water, this energy, this being that is you to move? Right. If I have the underlying assumption that I don't fit in with most, well, guess what? It, that's, that's a block in the way. That's the block in the way of the flow, right? That's going to block the current reality of the flow. And so when we have that, it takes time. Well, guess what you're going to find? Everything's taken. So, guys, when you see your underlying assumptions, you start to see how you're creating your own reality. True. And so the great thing about this 
is that you created your assumptions. <laughs> so here's the, the last the last big question about this book is with an assumption like that, where is the power? With an assumption like that, that you just wrote down, where is the power? Where is it? If it's not with you, where is it? Right, it's outside of you. You see, we're giving our power away to, to I don't fit in with others, right? So most people who make a big difference don't fit in with others, right? But if we're giving that assumption, that power, you see? And so I want you to really get this, okay? Really get this. When you have that assumption that you've just written down, by the way, did everyone write down an assumption that they're assuming that's underlying everything? Yeah, it's the riverbed that they move through, yeah? It's the riverbed. When you have that assumption, what type of actions would someone take with that kind of assumption? That's a very, very interesting question. With that underlying assumption, what would their life be like? What would be their focus? You see, and you can see that it's this structure. It's not you. You just only, you couldn't move outside of that because there was resistance everywhere else. So, you know, one of the laws in the universe is that we always seek the path of least resistance. Yes. And so you have this structure and I wanted to pull that out so you guys can see it so that you can know yourself better. Right. Because sometimes we get mad at ourselves and we're going, it's me. I need to be better. But guys, if there is a concrete wall in front of you, more motivation, more pushing, more everything, you'll just knock yourself out. Right. And who's felt like that sometimes like, well, why aren't I doing it? Why am I not going here? Why am I not doing that? Like you, I better read another bloody book. I need to do some more of this, more meditation oh, I'm, But, but the structure underneath it won't allow yourself to, to fix it. And so we can go and like work and try to fix this human being, or we just look at the structure, the underlying beliefs, and we go, all right, well, if we just change that structure, well, surely they can just move. Imagine someone had an assumption that being rejected was a good thing, right? You know, I'm sure that's that's what maybe the, the president of the United States might think, right? Like maybe, you know, that's a good thing. That assumption allows them to move, right? And where others would go, holy crap, the whole world's against me. Like, it's interesting. So very, very cool when we start to look at this. So here's the, here's the question that I, that I have um, for you guys is, do you, do you want to keep that structure? Because there's nothing wrong with it, okay? And so you're powerful, all right. And I, I want you to really own this. You're powerful. Who's seen a baby, uh, you know, a newborn baby with all their power and they're, they're just, they're just powerful. They can captivate a room. They're just, uh, they can be whatever they want, ever they want. They have this ability to learn anything. They're completely powerful. Well, your higher self, your super conscious is so powerful. You, you know, you created that. And so I want you to first acknowledge, okay, just for a moment, I just want you to acknowledge that you created that. I just want you to acknowledge uh, that, that at some point in the past, that assumption was really helpful. Yeah. And so here's what I want you to ask is I want you to ask yourself, why did I create this? What benefit did this give me in the past? What benefit did it give me in the past? And so here this says, God only knows. <laughs> no, you only know. <laughs> Deep down, ask yourself, well, why would someone create this? Carrie says it protected me. Yeah. How? Yeah. And so one of the things that it does is it allows us to stay safe. Okay. And, and we have to acknowledge that, that in the past we needed different, we needed different things to be safe. 
See, as a child, a lot of times, the one thing that we had to do is be uh, loved by our parents. So sometimes we had to create ways to stop ourselves doing things that were outside of what was okay for, for this family situation, right? If you want, we can just let that go. Right. We can just we can just let that go. We don't we don't have to have that underlying assumption anymore. It, we're, we're in control. What would you prefer? What would you prefer? And I just want you to ask yourself, what would I prefer? What would I like to choose to believe? What would I just what would I want to choose? What would I choose to believe that I am powerful? Choose I am worthy. Choose, yeah. That it's easy. Nice. Well done, Gwen. Yeah. That I can do this. That's a good thing to choose. See, because if you create different choices and different structures, then action is easy. Action is easy.